two-page dream I've got. Wow, cool. Oh, nice. Nice. Take two clicks. Oh, it's just... Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you make of it? Um, just for a moment, just stay yeah. on the first stream, the first scene. First scene. doesn't make sense to have a long neck guitar on mm. which to take a psychological test. Yeah, yeah, good. That doesn't, yeah. um, that's totally unclear. What? Totally unclear and inexplicable and... What is? That whole first paragraph. That's inexplicable? You yeah. mean you, you don't understand her? Yeah. Well, what are you looking for? Understanding? Good. So what's yeah. the issue? There's two buttons. No. Hey, don't go Oh, no, go she for, gave it to me earlier to take it home. Don't go for specifics. Okay. No. So she was... What is the issue? Okay, the issue is she did not finish her responsibility. Baloney. What is the issue? That I had, that I'm saving her, or I'm... In what way are you saving her? She was supposed to deliver the equipment to my house. Hey, you're leaving yourself out of the analysis. Well, so I came back... You are leaving yourself out of the story. Okay. Um, I felt I had to come to her office to take the test. You're leaving yourself out of the story. <laughs> no, I'm there. I. No, you're not. Okay, what? Read the first line. I was in this office. Good. A woman had given me a long neck guitar on which to take a psychological test. What was that like in the dream? What was that like? You know, it was, I really had no, no thoughts or feelings about it. What does that mean? It was like totally. Sure, don't move your shoulder, put it in words. Meaningless. You're putting yourself now in the dream. Mm -hmm. Hey, what was it like in the dream on that, that sentence? Come on. It was mechanical. Mechanical? It, 
Did you have an interest in the dream in taking a psychological test? No. You're now in the dream. Okay. Hey. Mm-hmm. She, she left, right, Seon? She left herself out of the dream. Yes, she did. You want to say and wouldn't you agree you. we should make fun of her at this point? Make fun of me? No, I, I don't think so. No. <laughs> okay, okay. No, maybe not. Maybe try to prod her a little bit more. Right? Now put yourself, now tell me what it's like mm -hmm. being in that dream and stop fooling around. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm probably angry and frustrated. No. I am probably angry okay. and frustrated. Probably. Well, I mean, what do you think of that? Have you got a probability, uh, like 5% or 1%? Uh, well, she had given me the... No, no, mm -hmm. I'm making fun of your answer. Yeah, I know. But... In the dream. Come on, in the dream. Well, actually, in the dream, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm Thank just... You. Like, and, kind of matter of fact. But, but I did, should be... But... Thank you. I should be saying something. Yeah. It's, it's her pr problem that I'm coming back for. She didn't deliver the equipment to my house to do the test. Yeah. So now I have to come back. Yeah. For what? For something that you want to do? No. Are you doing it for someone else? Yeah. No. Is that anything you've done in the past? Mm-hmm. Huh? No, I didn't. I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> now tell me about that first paragraph and leave yourself in at this time. Here I am. Come on. Here I am doing something for somebody else. I have no interest in it. Thank you. Now you're in the dream. Okay. Well, I probably did that Thank the, you. And night, what? the day before, the night before. Yeah. 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 What well, do you think? Yeah. What do you think of that? That's my That's my theme. That's right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And what do you have to, what kind of person is it that you'd be so willing to help? Someone who, um, cannot benefit from it. Yeah, okay, criticize her in terms of the dream, please. What kind she's, of a person is she? She's faceless. More. She's. You said it before. She doesn't talk. She's um. She's um. Meaningless. She has no. What did you have to overlook? I had to overlook her. Um, her inadequacies. What fun? Her failure to do her part. Mm -hmm. I had to ignore her failure to do her part. So now I'm... What part did you ignore? In the first paragraph. Well, she never delivered the machines to That's my right. House. Therefore? She didn't deliver. Yeah. You made it. And you had to put up with her and just... But you're dedicated for some reason to help people who kind of people do you go around helping? People who don't appreciate it. Not only that, but if she's an example, what do you think of that example?
That doesn't okay. work. Okay. Uh, it just picks up all the noise from the table when people put plates down and stuff like that. Jules, you don't have any more copies, right? Right. David could make a copy, I'm sure. It's a two pager. <coughs> She had given it to me earlier to do at home, but she never delivered the machine, so I had to come back at her home. So what is it like when you had to go to her office to do what you finish it? There was no feeling, no interest, no meaning. It was just very mechanical. Just the right person that you can help. Yeah. What are their marks? No meaning. Uh, and what do they do? They don't even do their part? Right. They don't appreciate it? Right. You have to overlook it? What's it like when you have to overlook it and that's in that dream and that line? So I had to come t into her office to do it. Well, I'm feeling obligated or forced in some way. I had to. See. Compelled. Or, I don't know. It's obligated. And I wonder about that. Like on Sunday when I was at this place where I was functioning like this, I thought, what is it that I'm? Doing. That's right. Why do I feel this compulsion? You got your to problem. Go, you to got have your to problem. Go. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, what would it have been good to do? Push that state of mind. Where the hell did it come from? Is that right? What do you think of the fact? that whatever sent you the dream is very interested in you and seeing your problem. Well, it's, I told myself that night, I hope I have a dream. It tells me something. Is it? Because you said you found yourself in that same situation just recently, right? Yeah, the night before this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's my mother. This is how I was with my mother. Only she made it, she somehow got me to feel honored to be doing this. That's the game. It's so creepy. I, uh, it's creepy. Yeah. In what way? I get even pissed off while I'm there. And yet I, I'm thinking the whole thing is an honorable In other words, whatever, she, whatever she did, you relive. That disguises and, and does what to what you're saying. Well, by the end of the night, I was angry and, um, in fact, I remember I put my tape recorder far away from my bed. I said, I don't even care if I have a dream tonight. I, I hope I don't even remember it. I was like angry. I didn't want to record it, but I couldn't forget it, so. <laughs> so the dream it's, is doing what? So. It's self-destructive. It makes me want to destroy my, my mind. Yes. And cross it out. Are you suggesting that was the motive of your mother? Yeah, that was her main problem with me was my mind. No. Then what yeah. she's, what would you call her? She's a mind what? Mind killer. Oh, that's a good title for the broad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, a mind killer. What do you think of that? It's true. But she, but she had. And I watch myself do this to myself. It's all the creepy. time. Yeah, it's creepy. All that's only reason. It hasn't been around long. It's exciting at the same time. There's something. Okay. Wait a minute. 
Yeah. Thank you. What does it all show? It's exciting. Yeah, because you think you're going to get honored. That must be an interesting state of mind. Yeah. What's that like? Honored. Come on. Um, boy, that's a good question. Exciting because I'll be honored. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, give me a scene with her. It's in like, it. you uh, know, God, you know, it's at the level of high. Like, God, you said what word? God. Like, God uh, is. W which one? <laughs> um, right? Yeah. Which one? What Same kind of one a, that, uh, What kind mother, of God? The one who my mother said uh, paid obeisance to. You know, what, what, what? My mother's God. I want to know what kind of God it was. This is a God who... said that babies and old people were all that counted or something. Oh, so you didn't count? No, I didn't count. Only babies and old people? Yeah. How did she, do you remember a scene when she Helpless delivered that, that ultimatum? Helpless people. Yeah, she would tell me I was really good with those, with babies and old people. I mean, that's when she looked upon you in what way? Um, really like she was like, it was like she was holding me. She wasn't holding me, but it was like she really understood and really was revealing the truth about me. And, um... When it was true or false? Well, you know, I mean, I did babysit for babies and I did work at the church nursing home and I took care of old people in my spare time. You're not answering my question. So I, so it's true that I, no, I wasn't good with them. So what do you think of it? Thank well, you. both groups were nonverbal. You know, she's mm -hmm. telling me, she's saying, you know, go with these groups and don't use your mind. Like, that's what it was like with these two groups. What kind of a God did she have? Um, this was a... Some kind of a repressive God. Reflective? Re repressive. Repress... I don't know the word. Re... what? Repressive. Uh, what kind of a God is a re... what is it again? It's a God that he likes presses. people to be quiet and silent and... Don't use your mind. Don't express yourself. Don't use your mind. That's your God. Yeah. That's your mother's God. Yeah. What do you think of that? Is that a God? I thought so. Well, what do you think of it now? Is it a God? Shoot. Huh? That's a good question. I, don't I want know. an answer. I don't know what a God is. Good. But you know where her God is. What is that God? Come on. Come on, she's introducing you to her God. This is a religious performance she's in. You're being initiated into a religion, her religion. It's true. Come on, so I want to know more about this God. It's true, this is all very religious. What? Yeah, I feel when I go, when I, yeah, it's like a it's like going to church. I don't I know what that means. I used to feel when I went to church. Oh my God! There you're going Here's again. It's my God. Yeah. What kind of a God is it? Now I need to know. What is it like going to church? <laughs> oh man, I used to dress up and think that I looked so cool, and then I wouldn't talk. It was. Phony. It was just all phoniness. You're not telling me what it was like. It was no mind. No mind. Just no meaning. No meaning. But a good place to dress up. No expressive expression. Don't express it. What right. kind of a God is that? Now, come on. She's introducing you to a very re interesting religion.
Well, it's, uh, you know, it's one of these um, theocrat theocracy, these, it's like, you know, one of those fundamentalist kind of... I don't know those names, so you have to, I, I don't know those names, so you have to tell me what kind of God, make it simple. It's a mind killer God. Oh. Oh. And so she's representing it for you. So she's equally right. a mind killer. Right, right, right. So therefore it's your job to be a mind killer. <coughs> right? Sorry. Or never to show your mind. And you have an interest in the mind, don't you? Yeah. Aren't you one of those people that have an interest in the mind? Yeah. Do you think you're going to have a little difficulty in doing something on the mind? Yeah. Unless you get a good look at what we mean by why she dreads the mind. Why does she dread the mind? Tell the truth. <coughs> what is she afraid of? What she's doing to you? She seems to be afraid of um, beauty and excellence. And she's afraid of beauty, excellence. And words, feelings, putting a name on what she's doing. And calling, putting words on what the family's doing and not doing. Seems like she wants the, um, but the beauty was the main, was a really big thing for her. I don't believe you. I wonder why. I don't know. I don't believe she has the slightest interest in beauty. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's what I'm saying. She oh, she didn't have any. Destroy beauty. Oh, she had no interest in beauty. Well, she was interested in making sure you you did, weren't beautiful. I was, don't believe she was you. Scared of that. I don't believe she had the slightest thought of you being beautiful. Okay. Now you have to you have to correct me. So give me a couple of examples okay, well, that like will show I, very clearly that she had an interest in beauty and your beauty. Go ahead. Well, like when I'd go to school in the morning. What? She would tell me to change how I was looking because... Because what? It looked, she said it looked too, like a slut. Oh, this shows her sense of beauty, that you look like a slut. So how did she make you appear in school beautifully? She wanted me to cover up. And that's called beauty. This no, is an example of be beauty. Covering up? That, it, no, that's why I'm confused. No, no, she did not want me to look like a beauty, like beautiful. She'd say that looks like a slut. So oh, then people who up. look beautiful are a bunch of sluts. Yeah. Oh, she's very thoughtful. It's part of her religion. This is her religion, right? Right, it all fits in her religion. Right. And it's all in that first paragraph. <clears throat> Is that right? Well, that I'm doing something for somebody else. That's what? That's meaningful meaningless, or meaningless? Meaningless. And mm -hmm. I shouldn't be doing it. And it's... Yeah. And the kinds of people you're being asked to help, or you are you are going to directing your efforts to help, they're what kinds of people? They're not going to appreciate it. Mind, mindful? They're or? Gonna, no, they're mindless, non-responsive. Hey, now, in the dream, what was it like being given that guitar and told that this is going to be a guitar test, a uh, personality test? Uh, you know, I don't even remember what it was like. I just know I had it there, and there were these two buttons, and it was very mechanical. It, right. Mm -hmm. For no mind, no judging. You right. Let it all go down. True. Uh, even though it's absurd. Right. Right. What do you think of the idea of a personality test based on that? Well, I, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, there's not enough to even be able to judge it. It's, 
I don't know if she's going to give me questions and then I push one of the... I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Thank you. Then you tolerate it. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the dream is nothing other than the first paragraph. Wow. Mm. Be, 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 be. Well, what do you think of the second paragraph? Um, yeah. What do you finally do with this great experiment? I tell her, um, I, you know, I hit the wrong button because I'm, I'm in upset. I get upset eventually, and hit the wrong button, and, and with that, I say, okay, that's it. That's like the last straw. I'm going to tell her. What's that like? Well, now I have an excuse. That's right. You need an excuse to use your mind. To make a decision and make a judgment. Yeah. Yeah. But you're going to make a, a judgment about the button instead of what she's doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. that's pretty clever, isn't it? It's clever. Yeah, mm -hmm. why? Well, it misses, totally yeah, misses yeah, the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get yeah. to avoid yeah, yeah, yeah. dealing with any content here. Yeah, the third, uh, third paragraph is just right. Well, that's when I tell her I'm, I'm not going to take the yeah. test. Yeah, third paragraph. Okay, then after she builds a fire? No, third paragraph. Well, that's when I decide now a lot of philosophy people are yeah we're gonna have some meeting there yeah what happens there well there's different people but somehow now I decide to tell the lady that I'm not gonna take the test there what happened to all the interest in philosophy and all I don't know That's it's all It's all gone, isn't it? Somehow, I... Only have that on your mind. Right. That I have decided not to take the test. That's not the only thing on your mind. <coughs> Wipes out the fact that many people internationally are coming into philosophy. There is no interest. That's what is interesting, isn't it? Right. Right? Yeah. Fourth, same thing. Do you find anything, right? You got a nice place, a nice occasion, what happens? Uh, you created this a nice scene to introduce philosophy to, what happens? Nothing happens. Why? Um, so something has changed. What's I changed? On the nice environment. Hey, what's changed? On um, location. So what? I what don't did know. that do to you? I don't know, but I'm all focused on the location and the environment rather, rather than, than on the philosophy. Yeah. And all the people who have come anew. Yeah. Yeah. You're being a good, good Christian, mm. ignoring the mind. Right, focusing on the meaningless. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tend yeah. to do this in my class too. Yeah. Okay. Second dream. Where's the problem? It's again. It's all in the uh, first paragraph. See, invariably, when anybody has a, a, a dream with many, many scenes, invariably, yeah. it's one problem showing various parameters of that one problem. Nice. So what do you see in the first paragraph that's the problem? Okay. Um, I'm uh, in a meaningless situation. I'm not saying anything, something I have no interest in. I'm, there's no meaning. It's 
so again in that new scene i'm all about the configuration of the chairs relative to the building you're not you're cheating oh you're carrying the implications of the first dream into the second. That's cheating. That is? No, can't do that. That's bullshit. Oh. Reboot. Okay. I'm asking you a specific question. What is the problem in the first paragraph? Period. Okay, why do I... Why do I say nothing? That's not, say? that's not even true. Mm. What are you the making problem. it up? What do you, what do you, you think you have to answer in the same way? Okay, I'm blocked from... I don't see that you're blocked. What is this? She's carrying the conclusions of the first into the second. It's just not, not right. Is there a challenge oh. there very clearly that you overlooked? Yes or no? Yes. What is the challenge? Um, to let her do her own work. Uh, well, what the hell? Might as well shoot pool. Okay. I'm trying to save her. Pardon me. Are you in the, in, in the next scene? No, I'm in the first paragraph. You're asking me about the first paragraph? Yeah, I was too. Where's the problem? The next scene. The new scene? Yeah. Down here? Yeah. Yeah, first paragraph of the new scene. New scene. The big one that goes from one to two. What's the problem? New scene. What's the problem? Uh... Major part of the first dream is in the second. Come on. Um, that I don't talk about the anything. <laughs> I'm leaping around and... You're not. That, none of that is true. Hey, hey, what's the drama? Come on, it's a drama. What's the drama? See it as a movie. What the hell is going on in the movie? Okay, so... Right? Hey, what's going on in the movie? That's a movie. Okay, so... That's a movie review. Okay. Hey, do you know that, that girl, uh, Ju Julie Hugger? Yeah. She's in the movie. Yeah. What's going on? Is there a crisis there or a problem there? I don't think so. Didn't you see the movie? Yeah. Well, read the sucker. <laughs> What's going on? So we're getting ready for a midwife review. Oh, really? Uh -huh. In a dream? No shit. What happened? And Pierre says, what can we expect from this dream review? Is that a good question? It's interesting. I wouldn't have seen this question. It's I mean, interesting. That's your mother. <laughs> what do I get into? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that kind just of... wiped out the mind. Hey. Yeah, so is the color green. <laughs> you have a dream with a midwife review. In the and you don't zone. see anything going on. How's your mother? You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to see meaning. So what happens in this great movie? Well, it's not my dream, is it? It's not your it dream? Is it my dream? Or I it? don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it could only be. And it was given to me as your dream. Okay. Maybe it was your uncle's. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in the dream. Hey, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. 
And I thought for a moment, and I said something very specific. How are you doing so far? Good. No. Yeah. I'll be darned. Go ahead. And you just beamed at that. Hey. Kind of smiled. Hey. What's it like? It was cool. Now you're in the dream. Okay. What got you into it? Well, yeah, I remember that was really hey, good. Hey, what got it? What got you into it? Well, you were beaming and smiling. Hey, overall. what got you into it? You didn't see it until right now. What got at this moment? Well, the the idea that this could have been my dream, I don't know, makes me wonder. Yeah, because it's good. That would be cool. Therefore, it can't be yours. It must be someone else's. I was thinking it was somebody else's. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, what's the drama now that we got you in the dream? Well, once again, I guess I don't want to see myself, but... Come on, read it. As if it's, hey, as if it's a movie. Give it some feeling in it. Come so, on. So, you asked, what hey, can we explain? Hey, give it some feeling in it. Just don't okay. read it. Come I on. thought for a moment, and I said something very specific. Yeah, hey, more. I and thought, come on. He just... Hey, no, no, no. Come on. Ba -ba -ba -boom. <laughs> come on. And he just beamed at that. He kind of smiled and was shaking his head up and down. Yeah. And then he said something to the effect that that was a very good answer. Hey, what's it like in the dream? Well, just like it is now, it's like, it's it's cool. Yeah, which word cool? I don't know it's, the word. It's, uh, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, no, it's really uh, exciting. Nice. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Yeah. You ain't using the mind, kid. So what do you think of that answer you just hey, gave? Hey, you're not using your mind with the cool, nice. <laughs> what was it like? Would you like to be there now, at that moment? Well, what was it like in the dream at that moment? Yeah, it was really alive. Thank you. Is that different than cool and nice? <laughs> yeah, a little. A little? A little higher up. Okay, you got to <laughs> take whatever answer you can yeah. get. Okay, so, but I want to keep reading. Why? Because it goes on. Go ahead. Are you, Feeling. He, okay, are you aware that that was a very good answer? Hey, what's it like? Same, it was really alive and... Now alive! It was like we were totally together on We're this. together. And while he was saying that, he was physically in the air coming towards me. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah, go ahead. And then, well, after that, I thought, oh good, it was a good answer. Hey. I gave a good answer. Hey, what do you think? I'm glad. Yeah! How, yeah. how glad? Cool? Nice? <laughs> Just Mama, what no, I, mean, I was glad inside. Well, what's that like? Just like alive. Alive, like yeah. a little bit, a lot of bit, a half a bit, two bits. No, a lot of bit. A lot of bit. <laughs> not, not a lot of bit. <laughs> yeah, I was alive. Like my mother would not want me to be. Yeah, now you're getting That's close to it. Go ahead, more. And then, after a while, we're milling on the grass near the sidewalk. And as I get close to him, he kind of takes my arm, but he grabs the skin on my arm between his fingers, and he says something about the birth. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that birth. Now I'm excited again. And I'm uh, really... That, hey, what does that mean, that birth? Because I, I remember that there had been a birth. What, what is that? I don't know the word, birth. I don't know either. Well, I don't know either. <laughs> Come on, more. I... I it, you reminded me of it when, in this, but... That you gave birth? That hey, could you have been given birth with, with that answer? Something, there was a birth. Oh, I'll be damned. Hey, it's getting good. Keep going. But I'm not sure I ever saw it, because, and yeah. you say, and I'm, oh, no, and I'm really happy about the birth. How, ba how happy? Well, it's a high level of, like, relief and freedom and stuff. And freedom? How, how's the freedom? Um, just... What you see here, I'm, I don't I'm see really nothing alive. here. You tell me. Well, so I'm really happy about the birth, yeah. But Go see, ahead. I had forgotten about it. And he says, "Oh, it's a beaut." And now I'm beaming and thinking, "Oh yeah." Yeah. But see, I had never seen it. It was like a birth. Hey, I don't care. Stay in the dream. Okay. So then Nancy shows up, and it's kind of dark, getting dark, and the. That dog who belongs to Dave, the water guy, shows up. His name is Daisy in the dream. And he's leaping about, and Nancy has had a word with Pierre, and now she's leaping across the street and goes over to talk to Rhonda in the car. And then I'm leaping with Daisy, too. 
and it's all very playful and very ethereal, kind of weightless. And so I don't know, but I'm wondering what they're doing. That's weird. Um, I think Nancy gets under Rhonda's car. Uh, where's the, you, you skipped the, uh, It's a butte. Uh, um. I'm still up here. Yeah, I'm with you. Um. What's the drama, then? The drama? Hmm. Good question. You know, there's a certain distance from myself and this birth that I gave. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. You said, oh, yeah, it's a beaut. I'm happy about it. But I really haven't seen it or something. Like, it's like you're telling me about it. So, uh, would you now do me a favor what? and pick it up? from the preceding page. Okay. What can we expect from this review? Come on. Right. Okay, do it. What can we expect from this review? And I thought for a moment, and I said something very specific. And he just beamed at that. He kind of smiled and was shaking his head up and down. And then he said something to the effect that that was a very good answer. And what do you think of that answer that you just gave? Are Stop. You... What did you want to know? He wants me to know, to judge what my birth. Yeah. Did you answer? No. Was it a good question? Yeah, it was a fair question. Fair? I don't know the word fair. Well, it was, uh, it's asking me to show myself. Yeah. Judge. Judge your own answer. What do you think of your answer you gave? Is that right? Right, I let you judge it. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, but what I do you think judge. of that? No, no. You sneaked <laughs> out. Huh? Sorry about that. You sneaked out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sneaky as <laughs> shit. Right? Yeah. I let you judge it. Right. Oh, boy. Ooh, I sure don't want to judge anything. Funny. And you, but you want to use the mind. Yeah. And this is an argument, right? He's ready. Ooh, okay. Yeah, good. Mm. Okay. See, so it's, see, it's still, still the battle over the first paragraph and the first scene. It is, yeah. It? Yeah. Right. Good, 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 good work. Okay, good right. enough. No, do you want to know? That's enough. I mean, uh, uh, you didn't respond to him what did you do see the same thing happens in the last two paragraphs okay right what's the problem in the next to the last paragraph and now and I'm standing okay I'm waiting for somebody else to take care of it yeah she understands, yeah. it's okay, so yeah. she'll, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah. take care of my own underwear. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Last way. paragraph, same thing, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Oh, brother. And you didn't, Pierre didn't give you the answer, you had the answer. But uh, what did you do? You didn't tell him what you thought. These are all thoughts, mm. but you didn't give those okay. to him. She didn't judge it either. But she, she did. She more. said, I thought, oh, good. It was a good answer. Where are you? That doesn't the answer the talk. question. Does that answer the question? Well, yes, it does, but she doesn't tell Wait, you that. Well, after that, I thought, oh, good, it was a good answer. <laughs> are you but aware that what's that the was question? a very good yeah, answer? Actually, and she doesn't remember this statement when she talks about she gave I gave some kind of answer that doesn't specify what the Why is were. that a good answer? Why, why wouldn't that? Are you aware that that was a very good answer? I thought, oh good, it was a good answer. Because I'm relying on what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm not saying I thought that was a good answer. I'm saying, oh, he said it was a good answer. Yay, I gave a good answer. He said that? Yeah. Where does that sure. In the previous paragraph. And he said something to the effect that was a good answer. And then he said something to the effect that that was a very good answer. And what do you think of that answer that you gave? Are you aware that that was a very good answer? And then I'm taking that and his judgment and saying, yeah, I gave a good answer. How are you taking his judgment? Through osmosis. Yeah. Through osmosis. While, I'm just listening to him. Yeah. And while he was saying he was physically, and then, well, well, after that, I thought, oh, good, it was a good answer. You mean when you say, well, after that, I don't know. Is there a reflection on the answer that she gave that was called a good answer? I would say no, because it said, and she thought for a minute, and I thought for a minute, and I said something very specific. But there is no very specific to go back to, oh. so it's all in. It's it's all ethereal. It's a very oh, it's a very good question, but. Yeah. What are the words that are going back? Uh, and what did I specifically say? Yeah, yeah you didn't say. It. But, mm -hmm. but if you forget, what I'm trying to say is, if you forget that, mm -hmm. then the rest of the game can continue. If you actually do remember the words, then you'll have to own the words, and you'll be able to go deeper. Into True. It. Right. Well, so by it? saying staying vague, you get to stay in the game. What is what is what is it I'm missing? Because I thought that she. Answered. Are you aware that that was a very good no, answer? Saying that. Does it say what she thought of the answer? Yeah. Not whether that. she not whether she liked the answer she gave. Is there a request to reflect upon the answer? Are you aware that that was a very good answer? That's Pierre asking that. Right. And her response is. He's, she's responding to your question. But when she says, oh, good, Gina, how do you read that in there? Because I think that's key to in the fact that, oh, good, right? right? Yeah. Oh, good. What? <laughs> how do you yeah, read it? Like, what? I don't know. How do you read it? So, no, you. Hold I'm it for a moment. Something. Okay. Please tell me the question that she is asked by Pierre. Yeah. Are you aware? that that was a very good answer. What do you think Isn't that interesting? Um, and then he said something to the effect that that was a very good answer. And what do you think of that answer that you just gave? Is that there? Okay, so she's answering the second question you're asking, not the first one. Okay. So she is answering the second one, but not the first. Are you getting, is the one I just read a request for a reflection on the answer that she just gave? Right, but you also asked another yeah, question. Yeah, I know that. And Did I she answer that question? Did, the first one, no. But the second one she did, and that was what I was puzzled by. Hmm. Okay. Ah, fun. Fun. I, I was going to ask about, <clears throat> did you figure out what, is that supposed to be a mystery, the part where the bird section is? Is that something that you're going to work on, or is that an answer? something I have to um, acknowledge in myself. And take <coughs> credit for and acknowledge and put words on and <coughs> for myself. Hey, rather than what was the last word? Self. Before that. Judge for judge for yourself. Just like but a good Christian. No. no. What, what do you mean, or? I don't know. Just no, that's what my mother wanted to That's what you should allow. do. That's what you should do, all those things. Well. 
Doesn't sound, I don't know. Doesn't Maybe. sound very interesting. Doesn't sound like you're very interested. No, I am. Oh, okay, well, I, uh, cool. I think she says judge, maybe categorize it. I thought you put the name birth on, on one, the earlier part of the dream, Joe. When you said to Pierre, I think it was, I don't mean early, early. I mean, I think when you Here said, um, what can we expect from this dream review? And I thought for a moment I said something very specific. I believe you were referring to that, but you, the end of your comment to Pierre was that that was your birth. That was, I thought that was what you were referring to birth. But I could be wrong. Right now I'm trying to recall. I know he asked you to go back in the dream, and I thought, think that was what you landed on. But do you, you not recall that? I don't recall that specifically, but I think anything that I, that comes out of me would be a birth. In that section? Or? Just in the, in the whole dream. Hmm. See. Now we can go back to the first paragraph of, and her explanation of the first paragraph. Right. What, what was essential that Julie revealed about the role with her mother that had such a decisive effect upon her? What word? What word? Grasp it at all. Judge. Mind. Mind is fine. Um, Judge. Judge. Meaning? So? Hmm. Okay. Um. That's where I came in, so. Honor. Oh. Ah. That's she true. was honored. That's oh, the that's paragraph. Right. This is That's the paragraph. She felt honored. It's picking up what it was like around Mama when she's giving that honored respect for doing something meaningless and without mind. Was that connected to the excitement? So here, the question is in the dream, when you have that acknowledgement, is that honor? What was it like? A Com competing model of honor. A competing model of honor, but now she has to go beyond honor mm. for meaning. Mm. Right, because moms didn't have any content. It was merely her authority giving it the honor. That's Whereas right. In this, That's it right. has to do with actually achieving specifics, which... So this is an, an alternate view of honor as compared with her mama, right, because it, but it's incomplete. Right, yeah, that's, that's what the dream is. I have to go beyond it now to meaning, to reflect. That's an usia, uh, see? Answering the question that you asked, would, if yeah. she were to achieve that, would that be, if she were to answer that question in the dream? She would then be being usia-like. If I were to judge my answer, yeah, yeah, well, that's and the give, you were asked to yeah. yeah, right. So the what do you the, think of it? the dreams pointing out where she can grow in terms sure. of getting further into challenging her version of honor. You so that eventually, it. as her dreams get progressed, she will have a point at which she's actually being honored for something real rather than something that her mother. That's the. That's the drama. Right. Gives a new meaning to honor killings. Shoot. Well, by the way, last night was very bad. I got in the car with Nancy and she said, Pierre, People don't want to tell you, but that was chicken shit. Really? Really? Well, you only stopped at 11. You she said, <laughs> did all that work, did all that work and what the dialectic was, and you totally forgot the most important thing. It's only, the only thing you forgot was the Republic. So she laughed all the way down mm -hmm. as we were going down Beach Boulevard. And I had to make up an excuse. It was very feeble. I tried to explain why I forgot it. It didn't work. She then attacked that and said, maybe that's the whole problem in the Republic because Socrates is demonstrating his memory since he's recollecting the whole Republic to an unspecified audience, maybe to himself the next morning. 
and your memory failed. You have not practiced memory at all. So she just rode the hell out of me. It was one hell of a drive. I was very glad she was driving because I was going through quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, why did you do that? What? Why did you, why'd you leave the Republic out? That was, I told you, memory. She made fun of my memory. She said, you lack the understanding of the Republic, which is you better start recollecting whatever talks you have so you can improve your memory since you forgot entirely the whole Republic and the role of dialectic. Well, now that she's reminded you, why don't you take us through it? Thank you. Yeah, but everybody has read the Republic and they know all about it, so I don't think it would be necessary. <laughs> Need a refresher. No. Well, oh, okay. Well, you did mention the good. Yeah. In the talk. Yeah. Well, mm. the whole republic is a caution. Do not get into the dialectic until you have mastered the arts of the philosopher. Mm. Mm. And what's most interesting is that the first study, I think, uh, Barbara, I think you have some friends who are into it. Yes, I do. I can call on any of them should you have a question. Right, because are you not exploring what, after all, is the one? Me too? Oh, I thought you were talking about my friends. You and your friends. Well, yes. Aren't they, okay. aren't they exploring what, after all, is the one in itself? Not, not in itself, itself. Excuse me. We are exploring. Isn't that arithmetic? Sorry? And doesn't he, yes, I believe does so. he not even go beyond that and talk about how it relates to the idea of number? Yes. And isn't that the subject? very beautifully stated in the second hypothesis? Yes. That is a whole view of number, is it not? It is. That develops the necessary set yes. only of numbers, mm -hmm. as well as other numbers beyond the necessary set? Yeah. Yeah. And then, mm. supposed to take that and push it into whatever he calls geometry. Agree? Agree. And what is that? You have to meditate on the nature of being. Right. right. And solid geometry, the most important study, there's no teachers of it. Right. No students of it. You can't teach it. People will ridicule you if you try to teach it. It's totally worthless. Right? Nobody would even dare put up a thou shalt teach the solid geometry according to Plato's Republic. By the way, what would they have to study? Would they have to see? And study. And be. See, study, and be. Hmm. I don't know. I was listening to the dog. Three space. She's listening to the dog. No, you got to get in the text. Charm. Yes. Oh, wow. Right. Them, so Why is that important? C, that you can't do the dialectic without ah. charm. <laughs> Go ahead. So it makes it a, a spiritual practice. Like, like your dream work with people. <clears throat> If someone, if someone wanted to study charm in terms of the Republic, what would they have to do? Um, this is where David and Barbara's expertise comes so suddenly to the forefront. What? The first book with Thrasymachus and how Socrates engaged. Just the first book that will teach you. Charm? That's the beginning. He oh well, it. then fill it in. What would well, they, what would they have to do if they wanted to explore it? Well, he took Thrasymachus, uh, took 
Thrasimachus. Well, actually, he saw Thrasimachus' state of mind and how he addressed it and what he did with it. Did that tell you, though, what charm is? can turn around somebody like he did, like that person, to reflect on his answers. Yeah, that's charming. If you can do that. How he did it, I, it would be in the in that dialogue with, so with Socrates. Is that clear? Sounds like an example, but not what charm is. Yeah, true. Would you not agree? You'd say, do a word search. Yes. <laughs> on the no presence of charm, that word, wherever it appears in the Greek, since oh, nobody yes. translates it consistently. Oh. Hmm. Would you not, David? Cars, cars. Yeah. Take a look at it. Then you'd look for both its presence and its absence, since he makes the comparison between the two. Hmm. Here, what's the word cars. that they mistranslated to? Oh, they, they, well, they just don't try it. Chorus. No, but I mean, that's the Greek, right? Oh. And the English that's is right. charm. And, and the English that's is charm, but what is it when you oh, mistranslate it? Whatever it is, it's never that. <laughs> wow. That's, it's, it's, it, to translate it as charm is kind of a mistranslation. Uh-oh. No. Because charm comes to, from the word to sing. To yeah. Intent. Yeah, I was going to say there's a bit uh, of magic with charm. To sing a song. And, and be pleasing. Yeah. See, the, see mm. part of what Gina advanced <clears throat> is what, say, uh, sir, uh, do you have a grandfather? Yes. Good heavens. <laughs> is it likely that he had sons? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it does. Oh. By definition. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that you're now going with the family gathering mm -hmm. and you're going to go in and your first question is going to be, say, what is your life like now that you're at the end of your life? Shall we not take time to review it? Wouldn't that be greeted with a smile? <laughs> Not always. Not, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not by always. some it people. It begs a few questions, like you're old, you're about ready to die, and what do you um, do with your life? And have you had any thoughts about it at all? <laughs> yeah. Probably put somebody on the spot. Would that is that likely to be greeted with a smile and well, a firm handshake, it, or would someone object to that? I think if it's a family gathering, the mood would be pleasant. I I would say. And if you were to add to it, say, have you thought about the next world since you got one foot in the grave? <laughs> because that's what he's asking. Yes. He's asking yes. So therefore, for him, if you wanted to film this, what kind of state of mind would you want Socrates to be in if you're going to film it? Charming. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, you, 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 right? Whatever, whatever it but, takes to allow you. Right? Right? Exactly, sure. Well, he doesn't... To hold There's on to the question. The nine. He doesn't care if you have a hang up about being old or talking about your life. He's going to ask you a direct question. Old and greedy but, and. But <laughs> what Pierre's saying is that he has to be able to assuage the situation in such a way that he doesn't throw him off. Because you're, what does that your intention. Assuage. assuage no, man. throw him off. What does it mean? Or kick him out. Him Turn him off. Piss him off. Yeah. Piss him off. <clears throat> Talk that, that, to so well, he hey, would you agree you can do the you dialectic do in a variety of states of mind? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is charm important? Yeah, it's very interesting. There's a, there's a higher level to charm. Uh, okay. Going back to the song image, the song was an incantation to invoke the divine. Okay. And so Ooh. there may be that part of it also, mm. that it has uh, an anagogic principle. Yeah. That the conversation's blessed. Yeah. It invokes so the in spite of how it's taken, your best intentions might be um, the an, a valuable aspect of it. Yeah. Maybe because you're dragging people up a steep ascent, mm. and and therefore 
they're they're go undergoing something very difficult to undergo, and so the the charming part makes it more makes it facilitates right. their progress right. and growth if they can handle it. Darn right. Yeah, and he he explains the process in the yeah. cave. So what the hell yeah, is this? Hey, what's astronomy doing? Starting them off. The harmony? Is he dealing with our... No, that's harmony. That's not after astronomy. Is he dealing with after our astronomy. <laughs> Well, I mean... What book is it? It that's has nothing to do with the stars and the heavens, right. he says. No, it's, it's conditioning the eyes to start them with something that's not quite as bright and then they go down into things that are more bright. Don't they raise problems? Hmm? They raise problems. So what? different than looking at the stars and heavens, but so what? he's raising problems with Cephalus and Thrasymachus the and Polymarchus. Huh. And Polymarchus. I, I guess no. that was not that the is astronomy is for the eyes, mm -hmm. just to accustom the eyes. No, she, look at, she, the vision she's got half the answer. Yeah, so. I don't remember. The, and the move, the quickness and the slowness. But the it doesn't have the essence of it. No. Just as, just as the quickness and slow, I don't know, don't remember. The problems that exist what that one experience in the meditation, that's the kinds of problems that are going to address in astronomy. The same kinds of problems as we found in geometry. Geometry is meditation, therefore whatever difficulties people are having in the pursuit of meditation, he's the meditation master. Is that there? He's like, he's quick, quick. <laughs> yes, seven. 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 Page 387. Now, <laughs> yeah, what do you got? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, well, just what you were saying. So then we will pursue problems in astronomy as we do in geometry. Right, there it is. And leave the starry heavens alone, which yeah. means. The hell with the heavens. That's nothing to do with the heavens. If we mean to tackle astronomy truly and to make useful instead of useless the natural power of thinking in the soul. Because you have to, that's the thinking in the soul that's, that is in conflict as a result of the attempt at meditation. So hey, how about harmony? Has not a damn thing to do with music. It's a big difference. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> what does it have to do with? Seeking concords, isn't it? Yes. Seeking concords in numbers. Oh, in your they search in for the numbers. Soul. In the Very good. Where? No, no. Oh. But they do not come up as high as problems, so as to discover which numbers are concordant and, and which not. not. And, why. and, and why. the only person who can do that is the person who knows the second hypothesis of Parmenides. Mm. Right? Mm. Which would take them to the set of natural numbers, which is the basis for analogy, we were saying. Like the analogy they would see the natural kinship between Hushia and the one, and Hushia and the others, and the one and others, and how they are joined together. And when they are interrelated, it allows him to generate one, two, three, four, six, wow. nine. For those are the key numbers in all mean analogies, the arithmetic, the geometric, and the harmonic. Wow. Right? He says, but all of that, that's nothing. That's merely a prelude to the law of the mind, which is the dialectic. But that misses the major point. So Nancy rode the hell out of me when I tried to recover it and Give her this. We don't want to miss the major point, though. She said, what? You were just saying that misses the major point. I hope you're going to divulge what the major point is. Well, those turned out to be trivial because she pushed this in my face and said, hey, you know, sometimes you're foolish. You know, right now you're ridiculous. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Tough, tough, yeah. tough shotgun there. Yeah. Really? So I had to. He's so, yeah, I'm there. I'm He's glad I wasn't driving. <laughs> Thank God. She's driving. 
Yeah, but he's riding shotgun. Yeah, I needed someone just shooting her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're Marcus. <laughs> yeah. So the um, so will. then I, I as I got out of the car, I hoped maybe I could escape the fury that was being poured upon my head. And I said, "Wait a minute. We're leaving out an allergy, anagogic relations." We're leaving out the role of analogy because the whole republic is an analogy. The ability to craft as a result of the reflections on the dialectic and all the categories, you have to be able to take those and then present them in terms of an analogy such as the soul is to the state and carry out the implications of that for 500 pages. So I, I got away. I, I was hoping she wouldn't do anything more, but as I left, I knew she left. She, you know, let me go. And if she would have kept you there, what? How would the conversation have gone? Oh well, she would have said, "How come you left out cosmology?" Mm. And especially the part. Well, we, we also have them here, too. Yeah. Okay. So let me give you guys a, a question which will later go <clears throat> on the web. <clears throat> uh, Nancy did the last thing. Uh, this is when we were going in the house, and I was lucky to get to the refrigerator for a couple of beers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah, she said, hey, why don't you tell, why don't you give people a real question? What the hell are you going to do when you drop dead? It's not going to happen. That's all. And I said, what? <laughs> she said, well, if you drop dead, what's going to happen in a wedding society? I said, I have not the faintest idea. So she said, why don't you tell them that we're going to go on a vacation for a couple of weeks and during the time, let them figure out what the hell to do if I'm uh, gone. Okay. So, no. <laughs> so, that was the end of it. I said, I don't know. I'm, it's not my, not my, it's a practice run not my problem. <laughs> so she's a mean, yeah, right? She's mean. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Practical. Doesn't hold back. So she said, what are you going to do? I said, well, Saturday I'll spill it out and uh, say, in my absence, let's see what happens. Let's see if people can pick up the ball and run with it. We can practice our charm with each other. Yes, the need for charm. <laughs> right. What David? And the dialectic and astronomy. And uh, <laughs> second hypothesis. Seems like a great topic for a few Friday nights to go through those studies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if yeah. you're if you're in that. So that's what we might play with next Friday while we get out of the sophist. But yeah, I know there's someone who's doing some good work on the sophist. What do you think of that? Who's doing good work on the sophist? Uh, what, what, what do you think of that? Uh, that's Great, I'd like to hear. <laughs> I know Who someone, I know someone in our group. Now, this person doesn't want to be known ahead of time, so this is under the table. 
He's looking up all of the authorities, as or as many as he can find on the web, dealing with their comments about Plato's sophist. All right. Well, that he lets us, lets a few of us off. And he's and this person said, and yeah. this person said they're willing to make a statement of what it is they found all because right. he's beginning to wonder. What the hell is going on in the history of philosophy if yeah. they take the sophist as a philosopher mm -hmm. making great philosophical points? Right, right, right. Aww. Since he has such a poor understanding of both. <laughs> I actually do have a poor understanding of both. Right? I think it's, it's called uh, academia. What aca? You were asking what's going on in history? Am I <laughs> aca what? Academia. Oh. I miss that often. <laughs> Sounds like a disease. I just saw. I just saw. I don't know why it came by <laughs> my desk, but an announcement for a at, at UCI a metaphysics course that will be taught to graduate students. You know, they've split their philosophy department now into two oh. departments. Really? What? Uh, to what? This happened a few years ago. There was a, a bit of a, sh a rift, but they uh, they still work with each other. But one's in humanities and the other's in social sciences. So is in, in social sciences, which is my building, and it's called LPS, Logic and Philosophy of Science. Oh, jeez. And um, LSP, so there's a professor science. who's a visiting who will be teaching metaphysics that will be cross-listed across both these departments, and you can take it. And I looked at the syllabus. Aristotle. Yeah, they've not studied No, actually not even any mention of Aristotle. Woo! No Aristotle, no, no Plato. No Plato. Oh. It's all modern guys. Oh, yeah. And mathematical. It's not metaphysics. I can get you guys the syllabus Kant? if you want, but I went, no, not even European. I mean, it's all really, this is your progress idea, right? It's all recent, at least, uh, no. what do I know? I'm not a uh, so who would be academic the, philosopher. So who would be the people they'd be focusing on? Yep, no. Let me... Can you drop some names? I can actually. Just any name. I didn't recognize any. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me. Thank I can God. get it on my phone. I can Let's pull up that email. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say, where, where are you gonna go to philosophy? I met one of those guys Kant, in my garden, and he's never read Plato. Wow. A grad student here. Well, that's nice. In that program. No, no, that is what it is to be a modern. Right. Formally, that's what the word modern means. That there's no need to look at the ancients. It's not, over. Not only in need, but you disdain, you disdain them. Yeah. Yes. You hate them. That you comes from yeah. positivism, what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it, it might go that way. Um, so is it all just rhetoric and argument now, or what? You have to be really clever. It's mathematical. And know a whole bunch of stuff. So it's logical. And when I read these guys mm -hmm. who are talking about the sophists, it's like you got to have a PhD or something. There, you know. Basically, the argument is in the sophist is about the the, the viability of non-being. Yeah. And non-being is is goes through the sophist. I've noticed finally, and um, they seem to think that non-being is the only way you can establish truth or falsehood. So far, that's you know. Yeah. I, I have yeah. Yeah. forty-five minutes last yeah. night, and then I cleaned house this morning. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, they all seem to be going to the problem of non-being, which they say, finally, the sophist puts back in the forefront after certain ill-advised and immature previous thinkers eliminated the possibility of non-being. In other words, Parmenides, and those oh. people who said that, 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 that non-being <laughs> cannot be. These wow. people need the idea of non-being somehow. I don't know how. To, to develop truth, truth tables and things like that. Oh so yeah. go, and so he says, if if Plato had known Aristotle, the sophist would have been even better than it is. Yeah, that's their view. That's Looking at the like, world through far, Aristotle. But, yeah. but it, so far, it's like it hasn't really, I haven't internalized it, yeah. and I don't kind of get yeah. it. Yeah. Doing good that, so far. That's what they call it. Yeah. Wow. So, um, but if, if you start with Parmenides, then you have to reject Parmenides because of the problem of non-being. Yeah. And you have to bring non-being into play somehow, I don't know how, yet. And then all that other stuff they throw in there about their scholarship and how much they know and all the different <laughs> platonic ideas, the Alentius and the Aristic and the blah, 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 right. you know, uh, that they use to describe um, mm. uh, platonic dialectic. And, and the sophist is an example of a mature dialectic. That's the other thing. Wow. A mature dialect. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. What do you think of that? Well, 
David's presenting it real clearly. But what do I think of the idea that the Sophist is mature dialectic? I can't see how anybody could even begin to hold such a position. It seems absurd to me. It doesn't, it doesn't, not only doesn't seem like a mature dialectic, it is not a dialectic at all. It doesn't match any standard. Okay. He doesn't present his own standards. Well, that's a right. good topic. So the question I would, I would have is, so if, if reason is out of the equation, <coughs> is it just authority that's going to propel these people to be able to prove things? I, I mean, so. if, if you're not really in a dialogue? No, they're not, they're not into personality. They have a method, and it has a lot to do with logic. And, so it's proven and, by and virtue. I think, I think the organon, whatever that is, uh -huh. by Aristotle and a few others, uh, and the modern helps they have, allow them to make sense out of, uh, out of the sophist somehow. Okay. It's not, it's not an a, a appeal right. to authority or... That's why moderns call it the new organ. Oh. That's what they want to present. Really? Yeah. They, they, okay, so I really hit a couple of good passages oh. there because it seems fundamental to oh. what, what the thinking is. The new and then, organon. And then or Uspensky is the tertium organum. Oh. Well, that's the or, third. Third. Is, yeah, I'm going to have to check the, because it might be a different No, organon. it's the same. Oh, okay. Organum. The yeah. third. Okay, the third. The yeah, tertium, yeah. Is, yeah, I, yeah, it was spelled O M, but that's a Greek ending. U M would be the right. Yeah, I get it. The Latin word. So, what is the dialectic? I mean, that's a that would be a great something to define or study or something. Uh, pardon me. Are you? Did you ever show up at at, uh, <laughs> at Regina's? Well, what is it, the dialectic? Oh, the dialectic. <clears throat> it's the boldest really claim ever made. It's a way to truth. Mm -hmm. so to what the, way, truth? the way to truth. Or, or the right, right, right. By using the mind alone. And the logos, the unfolding the of the logos. The true logos. The Is true. that right? Yeah. Did you have to recover that? Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, no, that's normal. I have a friend of mine who's normal, and I study him. <laughs> yeah, that way I can find out how to be normal. That's right. Take a normal person and put him on a bicycle. Yeah, then I can drive with Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> She might drive you nuts. You better believe You better believe it. You see the trouble I have with her? Don't let her drive anymore. <laughs> God. I think you guys would be thanking me for I that. I am. I don't understand that. <laughs> I am thanking you. We will. But wouldn't you agree that... Um, that going through the Parmenides, right, does something to the person who goes through it rigorously. Mm -hmm. Regardless of their background, their country, their nationality, their race, their religion, right? Their problems. They're, they then have to face their own problems. <laughs> In order to go through it, is that right? It raises their own, their own problems, does it? but not your not in your case. Well, it's all mine, so it's. Well, never mind. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll try. I do seem to succeed at that. Right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, that it's okay to study dialogues and do what we do in midwifery. Uh, well, what is what is the entry into? seriously looking at the Parmenides. What's it do? Uh, I, somehow, it's been a transformation for me recently in that um, the idea that there's, that you get through from dialectic, it's like, it, it kind of roots, it's like, it's like a good city state. 
it's very focused and centered, and but somehow that center extends out to the whole world and brings the whole world into focus somehow, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and or, yeah. or wants to more, yeah. and there's a desire, and so there's kind of a desire, that it, and it fills with desire to to embrace the world yeah. with that kind of thing. For me. Well. <clears throat> It's, well, I would say this about it, that it's, it's, part, it's partially the Parmenides and the fact that when you find a distinction, um, it leads you to wonder if the whole of the work is written with as much precision like we find it. We find sometimes that the, the, the text of the Parmenides has an incredible precision, the choice of words. And that leads you to wonder whether all the words have an equal precision that you just haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But I think also it's the fact that we're studying with you and therefore we're we're becoming accustomed to that way of looking at things with that depth and precision and raising questions to ourselves and being willing to hang out in not knowing mm-hmm. the answer mm-hmm. and in entertaining different answers Mm -hmm. but it seems to me that if I speak for myself that it's uh, it allows me to bring that heightened state of not knowing and clarity at the same time to it many things there's a freedom in it so I don't know but it seems like a habituation Mm -hmm. you know um, (laughs) the Greeks use the word habit or state of mind for a Greek state mm-hmm. or condition is is connected to to ha- habituation. It's the same word. Like what you do habituates you, brings about a certain condition. And I think these for many seminars have brought about a, a state of mind of habituation to a way of I'm not sure. See it's like I'm trying to grasp it. But um, it isn't only the Parmenides itself, but the fact that you bring in questions that really, that really kick our ass to descend into the vernacular for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that um, are very anagogic. I mean, it's almost like they're, they're more than anagogic. They're more like springboards. Like the way they describe mm. spring, the dialectic in the Republic with springboards, mm. you know, you sit, you get that question, all of a sudden you're boing out there, and <laughs> boing. you're in the um, <laughs> the boing effect, the realm of mind of the intelligible. So that's it. If I have, if I think of anything further, I will. Yeah. That was nice. Do you want me to comment on what Barbara just said, or show you the uh, no. syllabus? Uh, no, we're on another question now, sir. Uh, this one is everybody adopts it for themselves in their own way and, and speaks to it, which is what is the Parmenides yeah. oh. doing these days? In yeah, you know, is it, is it the question is David's asking is also like, uh, how, how would you explain to your friends that you're in the Parmenides and what you got out of it and why you're still in it? Define friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could be your friends. Uh, right? <laughs> These guys are friends, so I don't have to say anything anyway. At least I hope Yes, you do. But the ones that... I don't eat lunch with anybody anymore. I mean... You've lost all your friends. My last one. We're not doing too good. I, I mean, this is right. This he is found out who his true friends were. If if I if I had my druthers, I would not have mentioned Plato to any of them. If I could go back in time, I wouldn't wow. have said anything, because it has cost me dearly, and they're not interested. That's true. Only the people who are in it are interested. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if you say something, they think. Whatever they took from an academic course, they instantly relate to, which is wrong, or they think that you're a snob. Uh, or they think that you're knocking on their door with a pamphlet. Or, the, or you're yeah, proselytizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watchtower. Right? Yeah, or yeah. You're, you're, you're proselytizing. You I, I, I would have kept my mouth shut. But you got to find out why you invested so much time with those people. 
<laughs> yes, now that is the values. Yeah. Is now, a, and I still use it daily. I, I look at them, I look at myself, I see how each of them respond, how I respond, what's my state of mind, how have I conditioned myself. Um, that's helpful, but all of that happens with lips <laughs> tight, or I might mention it here, but uh-uh, not, mm. not at work, not... And conversations, as we all experience, are incredibly boring at other people's parties. And I'll, I'll usually <laughs> throw in, I'll try to make something anagogic, as Pierre models for us all the time, uh, with one or two attempts, at a, but usually it gets brushed off with a joke. We've all had this experience. And so, you, yeah, okay, fine, I'll go get a beer. So are those friends, those people? Well, that's why. I, yeah. So, uh, but if they're not, uh, then you still haven't answered the question. I mean, just since we are your friends, you yeah. can answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, on, uh, we, what's it like getting into the prime managers? What's it like for me? I'm so new at it, and I. What is it? I, I'm so new at it. I don't know if I can answer, but I'll try. Yeah. For yourself. Uh, I think with the way you guys go through the text, it seems to have a lot of parts and all these variables, and then you jump around <laughs> to different sections of the book and other books. Uh, so, but for me, I like the I like that it's not simple. You know, it's not uh -huh. clear. I can't one answer. Yeah. But there's yeah. multiple ways of looking at something. Yeah. But I think Gina would say uh, that in no way does it uncover one's problems. Never <laughs> would I ever say that. What would you say? Uh, What's it like getting into this thing? What has it done to you? Uh, <laughs> Ask Jeff and say on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just brought back another problem for me that just it emerged yesterday morning and I suddenly had an insight in this morning just listening and talking and responding by the answers that I gave with respect to the in respect to the Republic going I only gave a piece how come I didn't know it and how come I didn't go further and find out the sense of it and it suddenly occurred to me that that goes back to the very issue my mother, my father talked about when the doctor pointed out that he may have left some pieces out. That he may have left? Left some pieces out, the oh. doctor. And so I thought to myself, wait a minute. No, no, no. Would you mind telling the story so oh, people know what you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, my dad told me the story because I was about six months old. And he related that I was in my crib and apparently I had a Vaseline jar. Now you have to imagine this Vaseline jar. Vaseline jars back then are very thick, non-breakable. And apparently my mother was screaming at the top of her voice in the bedroom, pounding on the wall, um, that the Vaseline jar had broken and was in my crib. And so my dad apparently was downstairs and he came running up, grabbed me and took me, my mother and he and myself, to the doctor. And the doctor at the office said, did you check to see if all the pieces were together there? And my father remember, told me that he was devastated that he didn't check and see all the pieces. So he ran back to the house and he collected all the pieces and discovered all the pieces were there. Um, that was all that I remember the story. Um, but my dad telling me that story just occurred that I leave out pieces and I'm I thought that's interesting mm. that even in back in in the sixth grade in six months old that whole drama started and since then even 
in, in many of the discussions, I leave out a section or I won't listen to a particular section. I'll drop out so that I have missed that section. So what the Parmenides has done to answer your question uh, is bring up all these problems that I can look at and reflect on and study myself to better know myself. And since it is the most ideal book in the world on this planet, it would it has raised uh, my own reflections to the highest I can and to the degree I can at this point. <laughs> and uh, I don't think that there is a it's 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 Olympian. It, it's like we are in in Olympic games, and we are True. Uh, mastering ourselves in that process, and mastering the dialogue as well, but mastering ourselves in the process to achieve that Olympian gold medal. Yeah, and that's why the dialogue is celebrated at the Great Panathenaeum. <laughs> Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it? The dialogue was. I think my copy of the dialogue is missing a page. Because? Well, they don't celebrate the dialogue at the Great Panathenaeum, right? Yeah, they do. Do they? In Greece? Uh, yeah. What, do you, what are you seeing? What are you saying? It is at the Great Pan. What are you seeing, Jeff? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm missing your reference. Yeah. It is at the Great Panathenaeum. It is at the, but they don't celebrate that's it. That's not what they celebrate at the Great Oh, I see. I see. Depends <laughs> on who you're talking about. No. I mean, they, they're having their separate meeting. Well, why would you want to say it was a separate meeting? Why isn't that Who's not a the, celebration? Wouldn't that be the ideal way to celebrate well, the Great Panathenaeum? Right. right. Got it. I would so. Got yes, it. it would. And I thought Pierre was referring to yeah. they, the Poloi. Yeah. Ah. That's why it's significant that the Greeks at the University of Athens is now celebrating the Olympics, including a, the game of philosophy as one of the sports, Whoa. theological wow. sports. Because we went to that first Olympics, International yeah. Olympics of Philosophy, right? Yeah. Gave papers there. Yeah. Was that in Greece or in Tennessee? In Greece. That oh, was in Greece. Greece. Right at the beginning, when you're beginning the recollection, right there, Antiphon. Yeah, no, I know. He knows the passage. Oh, okay. He thought Pierre was talking about the Hoy Poloi celebrating the dialogue. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I got to. You have to leave? I have a dream, but. But I, <laughs> next time. Next time. Boy. Can I, can I just Six pack. Yes, yeah, okay, hold yeah, on. Six pack. Who okay. are some of these? Wait uh, until the last fucking sorry. minute. So, uh, it's not a Well, maybe I, I, it is. I won't read who the professor is <laughs> teaching or specifics yeah, yeah. because I don't want to, we're on tape, but uh, so fall 2015, philosophy XYZ number, metaphysics. So the, the syllabus reads, what is the self? What is death? And how do they relate? Starts out good, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, it must be dinner with the mortuary department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. mm -hmm. Now, all of you, please tell me if you've heard of any of these guys. Okay. This course examines recent work. Of course. On these related topics in three parts. The first part of the seminar takes a quote-unquote conceptual approach. For background, we will discuss excerpts from Parfit's P A R F I T apostrophe S. We will discuss excerpts from Parfit's Reasons and Persons, some of his recent replies to critics, and Shoemaker's closely related ideas on the self. We will then consider quote-unquote proteanism about the self and death in Johnston's recent book called Surviving Death, and in some of Zimmerman's work. The second part of the seminar takes a perspectival approach, quote unquote. For background, for background, we will discuss excerpts from Nagel, N-A-G-E-L, from Nagel's The View From Nowhere on death, 
solipsism, and the odd question of why you are you rather than someone else. We will then consider a recent book that, that Johnston discusses at length, written by Valberg, B-A-L-B-E-R-G, called Dream, Comma, Death, and the Self. And the third part, as time and interest permit, may address related issues in recent metaphysics, metaphysics colon, narrative accounts of the self, more explicitly deflationary accounts, parenthesis, according to which there is no good question of what the self is, close parens, and the metaphysics of cor and the metaphysics of corpses in relation to persons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one is that's a, Hey, that's a major step away from traditional Boy. philosophical topics. Is it ever? Major, major wow. shift. It almost, sound, it almost sounds like a good course in yeah. some parts. Wow. Some parts well, of it, sound, it, it sounds intriguing. You say it almost has like a lilt of that's a good thing, but I don't. Yeah. I don't see it. It seems like a hodgepodge. But what do you see? Well, uh, I think they're aware of the fact that now, for the first time, the self is the subject of philosophy. That's totally new. And in metaphysics. And, uh, yeah. yeah. It's part of metaphysics. Death in the self. Knowing the self. Is the self immortal? Are you allowed to ask questions of the self immortal in that? Or is it one or many? Does it engage in motion or rest? Is it? No, 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 no. They, they got authors on it. It's interesting yeah, they that they're they not they Western answer, philosophers. Okay. It's interesting that they're not Western philosophers. Yes. Yeah. Any of those listed? So far. I've only heard of Nagel. You vow. I've heard of Nagel too. It's Schumacher, of course. Who's the Parfit as well? Pilfitz? Parfit? I saw his name before. How many times did the word recent come How do you push this up? <laughs> You're doing it. That's the end. Oh. That's it's just oh, the one just paragraph. Grab it here crazy. And that's all. No, the other way. Oh, oh, that's only the, that's it. That's, that's the end. end. That's it. It's mm -hmm. just the one page. Oh. You're looking for more, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Parfits is that? P A R F I T. Yeah. So See, you guys have heard of two of these guys. Yeah, yeah two. Article and Parfit and reasons and reasons and hey, Claremont but, uh, College. Claremont. Well, I was going to ask you about this. No. No, that's, is that the same guy that came out of the no, this is a different No, 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 totally yeah. different. Now, the other part of the philosophy department is still going to be the old, the ancients, right? The with, ancients, uh, yeah. With the more Santos modern. and company, if Santos is still there, or who's over there right I now. think he retired. Could you send me that list of books that they're into? You bet. Yeah, you bet. appreciate it. And the other thing I, I want to get on tape, just because I, I sent a link to Pierre and a few of others of us, if anybody wants it, I'll forward it to you, but... Um, Barbara Honiger is a 911 researcher who's been working with the 911 oh, Truth Movement. This is good. For I mean, they've, they've been now researching this what 14 years. Uh, there's a as of the time of this video when she gave a talk in Seattle, it was 2013. So what is that? 12 years they've been researching and they've really they're really coming together. They've thrown out some theories. They've pulled others together. They've additional. At the beginning, when I followed it, the first four or five years. I had to give up because there was no unity. Everybody's arguing with everybody else, but they've one by one, they've isolated out, they've thrown out what could not be. So there's a three hour talk on YouTube. KPFK is selling the DVD as part of their fund drive, but you can watch it on YouTube. Oh, no. Nice. And she's put it up for free. You can make as many copies as you want. She's right. And she's written a, a book on this, and others have written books. They've had conferences on it, and they're coming to a, the picture is coming together. And the first two hours of this, and I sat through the whole thing, the first two hours are about the mechanics, the evidence. Right. Firstly, what could not be and why, and she's only scratching the surface. I mean, you could, you could do an encyclopedia of all the, the stuff that's come up. She scratches it, she hits all the high points. What could not possibly have been and why. What most likely did happen, uh, and I can, I can hit those high points for you if you want, but where it gets interesting is a little bit after the second hour, the last hour she gets into who the players are. It won't surprise anybody. And they do this by following they do this by following the supply of the materials necessary to be approved. 
Uh, the drone, they have a piece of the material, the drone and the inside of it, right? And who made the material that lined the inside of the, of the cockpit of the drone that was used at the Pentagon? Um, the thermite material, right. uh, who would have okayed this in the Army, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And they follow all this chain of command back up. And it goes to the very, it's all the neocon guys. Sure. So where they make it interesting, and the reason I sent it to Pierre is, it goes into philosophy. All these guys, Come all the major story. players, all the, he calls them not neocons, but neo-Nazis, really. Wow. That took over our government for that time, and still are, are yeah. still determining Obama's sure. decisions in <laughs> Libya and Syria. Um, these Young guys century, all studied though. under Leo Strauss at U Chicago, oh. and I and Leo Strauss himself. Uh, you know, this is the philosophy of. I asked Pierre, "What name would you put on it?" It's the philosophy of fascism. It's wow. it's Capitalists and Paul Marcus, right? This is, but they've developed it. And this guy, Leo Strauss, I want Pierre to talk a little bit about because you took him on, I think, part of your history. Leo Strauss uh, had a mentor for a while, Carl Schmidt, who was uh, um, a legal advisor to uh, Hitler, Hitler in Nazi Germany. Oh. And Schmidt, of course, being influenced by Nietzsche and so forth. So all these guys believe in... Fourth uh, hypothesis. There is no such thing as ethics. Mm -hmm. Um, every man for himself, the Superman, right? Leo Strauss did a major so work called this is where Tyranny. 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 As, as, as a good thing. <laughs> as a, it's a lot of tyranny. But they're pushing it. They're not just saying, you know, my makes right. They, they really, I'd like to know more about, because you've said here in the past, years, you really need to know your opposition. Where Barbara Honiger right. goes with it at the end is she splits off into, hey, look, it's clear that these termites, you got to lift the rocks on them. Do what Gandhi said, go for Satyagraha, which is uh, make everything accessible. Let's lift the light. Let's, you know, no secrecy, because the more secrecy these people have, the more they can accomplish in the background. It's only when things are transparent that governments do what you want them to do. And that's where she goes with it. But when I found out that she said it goes to Leo Strauss and you Chicago and back straight back to Germany, which is ironic because, the reason it's ironic is because essentially this is fascism and Nazism, but uh, Israel was a major benefit, a, a beneficiary, and, and I grew up Jewish, so I say this. It turns out that many of these players are Jewish, are dual citizenship of Israel, wow. and uh, the, the desire was to uh, topple six or seven countries in the Middle East, and we're still working on doing that, sure. Libya and Syria, so it's a divide and conquer, so as to make Israel's position stronger. Uh, th there were many beneficiaries. Tell me the name of the video again. So I can send you the link. It's just, uh, just, just the name of the uh, nine eleven Barbara Honiger. Just okay. search for that. Great talk. Um, sounds interesting. Sounds great. So, yeah. but the point is that I thought of what Pierre has always said to us, which is that, you know, how, what's the power of an idea? Oh. And we are suffering even now in a major way. Oh from a particular brand of European philosophy. That's right. Mm -hmm. A particular so just, brand just, of European, of European philosophy. philosophy. <clears throat> and I wanted you to talk a little bit more about, we could do it another time, but I'm so fascinated because you're talking about lifting the rock on the termites, as your, your, your guy Stuart in the other book calls them, right? But it's not just what they do, it's what they it's think. What the Let's look at the beliefs. What's the, what's the philosophical system that leads, and, and, and Julie put it into the Parmenides, calling it the yeah. four, might be the eighth. Yeah. Um, you said and, and Prosimicus. They, so, you know, the, who, who has taken these guys on, and who has said, well, you know, what about that point, and blah, blah, blah. Because I think that's really, Pierre has always yeah. said, that's what you really need to do is, so is to University of Chicago. Take them on. University of Chicago, theoretically, their basic philosophy came out of three thinkers Robert Hutchins, uh, the childhood, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mortimer no, uh, uh, Adler. Oh. Which is the uh, great Adler. book school. That's where you went. Yeah. And, and Buchanan. Hutchins, Adler, and Buchanan. Yeah. Natural. They formed St. John's College 100 Great Book School. Or reformed it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Why did they form that? If you want to understand this movement, of which I was a 
vital part of, in one sense. There's a book called The Great Conversation. In the hundred great books which are now, which have been published totally by the University of Chicago, mm. and they started the national movement of the great book seminars, right? That only had one goal. If you want to know the goal of the hundred great books, mm. the hundred and first great book is called The Great Conversation. It's a small book. In essence, it says, these books represent the cream of European philosophy. We are in a dialogue. We are, we are in our own intellectual, spiritual drive. No one else can participate in it mm. without giving up their difference. Wow. It is exclusive. And the whole Everybody point is the continuation of this Western civilization is based upon the hundred great books. The key books in the St. John's curriculum, right, all lead up to the third and fourth year. Primarily, Nietzsche, Hegel, and the implications of it, which right. end up being to Heidegger, the Nazi, Right, which only now they're beginning to recognize that the depth of his thought is, is a particular kind of Nazism. But that's a, that's a phony title. The, the real name is that, that they're following Nietzsche. Mm. Fascism is the name of the game. They're pushing fascism. Therefore, the people in St. John's who are moving and identify with this movement they get their degrees, they then go to University of Chicago in the philosophy department, and there is Leo Strauss expressing their view of how to understand philosophy vis-a-vis -vis Papa Nietzsche and Hegel and the implications of it in modern Europe. Now, didn't you and they, yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah. finish your thought. You were, I, I was just gonna ask you, uh, didn't you have an interaction at some point with Leo Strauss? Yeah, while well, he gave lectures. And in those days, I was into it. I want to understand this stuff. At U Chicago. And yeah, and I was also invited to uh, uh, Stringfellow Bar and Scott Buchanan Center in Santa Barbara, which was called the Center for De Democratic Institutions. I forget. The, the t proper title, but they were given the Wrigley Center as their center, mm -hmm. magnificent, you know, estate. And uh, I sent you know, they, they asked me to come up, and I went up there. I sat in. And I said, "This is bullshit." I wasn't polite at all, uh, <laughs> because it turned out that one of the people that were on the staff was a guy by the name of Wilkinson. And he's the guy who had a major point in kicking me out of St. John's. Mm -hmm. He was a mathematician. Mm -hmm. And in my senior year, we're sitting around, he's teaching calculus. And I'm sitting there and I started laughing. And he said, what's up? And I said, you're not doing mathematics, you're doing psychology. I said, look at here, theory of limits, epsilon. The principle is that you can get as close as you, I should get as close as you please. To the limit, yes. Yeah, this is absurd. Yeah. That's a psychological element in mathematics. Why don't you study so the, another kind of mathematics that doesn't retreat into psychology? He said, look here, we're going to stay on this point and I'm going to show you that there's no way of avoiding this conclusion and it's logical and it's not psychological. I said, good luck. <laughs> so he went over it and over it and over it and over it and I offered blah, blah, yeah. blah. In front of the class, oh, sure. he did this. He was so upset that he went to the dean and he said, this guy shouldn't be graduated with a degree from St. John's. He's not one of us. We're trying to produce these people that are true defenders of Western civilization. And I made fun of it for four years, oh three years. That's yeah. 
Yeah. So you didn't graduate? Three days before graduation, the dean called me in and said, this is very difficult to discuss, oh. he said, as he's filling his pipe, oh. Jacob Klein. Yeah, yeah. He said, but um, you got a D in your Don rag, which you have to give a paper. I did a paper on uh, the Fado oh. and told about the necessity of the separation of the soul from the body. And they said, that's not there. And I said, baloney, you can read it there, 67D, the Fado. Uh -huh. And uh, so Jacob Klein said, uh, I agree. You're not as, we don't want you to leave with the title that you're one of us, St. Johnny. What are you going to do? I said, but you're right. I'm going to go down to the office and find out how much I owe you, and I'm going to leave so I don't have one bill of three cents or two cents or one cents, and I'm paying you off and say goodbye. Mm -hmm. They were right. Mm -hmm. I was right. Mm -hmm. I was right. By the way, it was difficult to explain to my mother yeah. and family how you can, uh, let's see, I had 152 units of passing work, right. and they don't kick you, right? They, no degree. So I went to San Francisco, San Francisco State School. By the way, I shouldn't Transfer. tell the story, so I'll leave that alone. Well, but has anybody taken on... Wait, wait. What is the... So go ahead, Mark. No, he was about to tell the Well, story. you went to San Francisco, and... No, that's a no, I, that, you uh, that's you another somewhere, right? That's another story of. of we're talking about University Nietzsche. Going, we're talking yeah. about Nietzsche. What does, if we were to put him in the hypotheses, or is there something religious yeah. background of Nietzsche that pushes Nietzsche? He found it necessary to deny any any value in Christianity and urged a new vision, and you expressed it very well when you said the first book of the Republic deals with, with uh, um, the Thrasymachus. There he is. So he's an angry Christian that it didn't work uh, out. I, I, that's, I, that's I, don't, I don't know what I'd call know. him an angry Christian, but he was angry against Christians by, his, by saying that that was all a myth all they do is try to make people humble and and ineffective as human beings and therefore the thing is nothing other important than drive for success and conquest so he would then be a fallen christian which would put him in the eighth oh i don't you, you put him one some and somewhere in there <laughs> but but i did want to we, we've it's held you religion. well past and thank you nancy but um does anybody take on the philosophers of fascism, point by point? <laughs> the great the major <laughs> thinker in the 20th century is Heidegger. Everybody in the game of philosophy goes through Heidegger. Heidegger is a fascist. Yeah, but he even has 30, he has 20 years of his notebooks, and they publish them. These are his notebooks. He was, a, he was a member of the fascist party, the Nazi party, from the earliest years. He says the individual doesn't count. The only thing that counts is the folk, V-O-L-K, the people. The destiny of the people is more important than any life. That's, a fa that's fascism. No, you, I, you don't have any existence. You have to give up your life for the, for the folk, for the people. That's, 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 but has anybody gone through Heidegger, for instance, point by point, refuting it? Ref like, finding the weaknesses of the philosophy of fascism, has anybody gone through that systematically? Say, from a Platonic perspective, after all, they were, they were devout anti-Platonists. Wait a minute, yes there is. There's a Jewish philosopher, uh, who is who is on the who who was on the APA the APA uh, website, and he took on Heidegger, and he offered a challenge to the whole philosophical community that tried to find a way to justify the, that Heidegger is a, is a central thinker, and he called him a fascist, and he went through the twenty years of the notebooks that just been released. And said, here, 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 there's all kinds of evidence. You guys don't want to look at it. That was at a talk he gave? 
It's on the it's, uh, uh, it's on the website. Yeah. And what's his name? Uh, his name starts with a G, I think. Go, not Goldman. G O W E N, I think. That's the only person in the last in the last century who's taken on the, the philosophers of fascism in any. I don't know whether it's the only one. I I, I must admit that I do not keep in touch with Western <laughs> European <laughs> philosophy for strange reasons. Was there any response? Like, did they feel a need to? Well, yeah, a lot of people are are defending it. They're essentially uh, the embarrassing position of many philosophers is similar to the psychologists in defending uh, uh, waterboarding. Torture. Yeah, uh, all the all of the terroristic. Te what are we going to call them? Sadistic practices against uh, torture. Yeah. Torture. Yeah. But, but so I mean, isn't that precisely practice. what's needed? I mean, isn't that what you've said? You really. Like that is really what is called for at this point, philosophically, is to is to. But many people say, many philosophers say, it doesn't make any difference what his political point of view is. <laughs> that he is a major philosopher and he's worth studying just in himself, and the fact that he is a a full-grown fascist. Well, but that in itself is but is, is worthy of to that kind of activity. If it th does it thinking, does his by the fact that he's a philosopher and therefore completely transcendent, does his thinking lead to the kind of activity which would fulfill uh, a fascist view? Argument. He was expressing, in, in his writings, he had a kinship with this. That's German thinking. So you can't call him a philosopher. You have to call him a social engineer. Pardon me? He really isn't a philosopher. He's more of a social engineer. Well, that's what I'd call him, with other names. But they're saying because he called himself a philosopher, therefore he's sacrificed. See, European philosophy invariably proceeds out of universities. Okay. Sure. Right. If you if you get a job in Tübingen as a professor of philosophy, then you declare what philosophy is, and you give the direction to philosophy. Oh yes, that's the approach to dissecting their thought because it's progress. It's, recent. it's primitive. It, it's yeah. it's primitive. fundamentally Let, primitive. So the question advanced. is, how do how do you get through to someone who yes. is in a mindset that is in the I don't know seventh eighth? That's what they are. That's what they develop. That's what. The but it, but if we can <sighs> if we can assume. Uh, that that this is really where this is the pinnacle of of what we later see come down into the Republican Party or into legislation that we see in Congress or in lobbying groups and corporations and how corporations act. This this philosophy, if you want to call it, or social engineering, um, filters down in weaker and weaker ways. But it's still. I mean, all the way down to the school where I was doing an IEP, I told you, right? You know, even if homework has, even if you've shown through research that homework has no effect on, is not related at all to success later in life, shouldn't we still give them homework to teach them accountability? I mean, so in, right, this still tracks back to Nietzsche. Um, well, I think that's where it goes. And taking an order, right? That's and giving a promise. So, yeah, if you really want to change anything, for the um, for the better, should you not, should we not go through that line of thinking point by point and offer its weaknesses and say, look, I, I, this is I, I, what you guys really believe. Uh, what about this? What about that? Isn't that precisely what's needed? No. In this time? No. 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 I, I think it would. Uh, it's likely that if one were to look at all the PhD theses done on Heidegger, it's likely that there would be you could catalog them in terms of pro and con, and among the the uh, adverse criticisms, they're probably a constant, reappearing set of ideas that has no effect. Mm. That's 
right. Who's going to listen? You know, I mean, it's so similar in Japan. Saying, when Japan started getting in the pre-World War II, they identified with the Nazi party, with Nietzsche. They saw it as militaristic. That's the same thing. There is a, hey, uh, Eurocentric thinking is central to what it is to be a European. I'll tell you who would listen. Uh, the people who listen and, and subscribe to KPFK would <laughs> listen. And, and there is not enough good philosophy on KPFK. There isn't. But that, if you want, if you want a, a small set of people who are intelligent and who are looking for something better, more than just crystals and, and new age philosophy. They're really looking for like, hey, they love good thinking. There used uh, to be sure. a philosopher's right? stone on there. The Did philosopher's they? stone back, and then they mo removed it. They who, removed it? Who was this? There was a philosophy program called the Philosopher's Stone. On KPFK. Back in the 70s and uh, early 80s. And then, Get Amy Goodman on that one. And then they took it yeah. off. She'll never go to that level. She's not there. They took it off, and I remember that. I, I think Pam was Burton a, was the moderator. What about Ian? There was She's or, up at uh, Berkeley now. What about the Pierre guy at 5 o'clock? I think Ian Ian. What not about uh, Mitch Jezerich, Letters and Politics? So there's, no, there's nobody doing... Philosophy. Nobody. But, but, but see, that's the thing. is that like Everything that they talk about on KPFK relates to these problems. But nobody has unified But you could it. do nobody it. Nobody has just pulled yeah, it together and gone, hey... You know, you can get free training for radio work at UCI. They do it twice a year. And you could get your own program at KPFK. Yeah, trying to get into KPFK, is, I think, is a, unless they've changed, is a waste of time. <laughs> Why? For what you said. What you, what you see. It's especially now. Amy Goodman is in charge. Her vision is what the what she's pushing. Oh really? On KPFK? Yep. All the radio, all those stations. I don't know how influential is she with Pacifica, the whole Pacifica network, not just very. Yeah, she's pretty influential. But well, she, she likes, did. But she, I remember there. I Go remember ahead. there was uh, presentations to KPFK at the Philosopher's Stone. Mm. If I remember correctly, I think Pierre submitted something. I suggested something. They rejected it. Mm. Well, then I'm wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. Have your own. Yeah. Develop your well, own. Well, yeah, I mean, the new outlet these days is YouTube. Just start a channel. But, mm -hmm. you know, you still got... Probably um, a lot more successful. Too. You've still got uh, Wiener, the guy... Yeah. John Wiener. Yeah. John Wiener, who's at UCI. Is he open he still to... Has he program. has a show on KPFK, right? Is he what? open to... Talk to him. Again? Ask him what he thinks about what the is philosophy it? of Nietzsche and... I think Barbie. He might have some ideas. Or maybe he would have you on his show, or he'd, he'd interview Pierre, or... He's a nice guy. I'm thinking that this question came up with Barbara, and the discussion was, what discussions would most, of what Pierre and, and the discussions we've had, most rep be representative, or could be put up in, on, on the web? Mm. And I think she oh, mentioned a couple, and I, met, I remembered about three or four weeks ago, there was a discussion on play, and that discussion unfolded, and I thought, this would be really good. This is a question that would, could be un universally discussed and considered, and even this discussion would be universally considered and discussed. And I thought that may be the, we already have that material how do you put it up on the web? Maybe develop your own radio show. But I think there's enough well. dialogues that Pierre's been in and discussions that we've had that are rich. Well, and raise a lot of good questions. See, to go back to the yeah, that's it. Um, what what makes what what a what is the power in society that perpetuates certain beliefs? Oh, I'd like to do that with myself. Like, um, when you were asking a moment ago, 
the perpetuation of these beliefs. Yet, you're also familiar uh, with all honorable men. See, what all honorable men does not include is what kind of philosophy did these people have Right. that guided their thinking for, right. the res for the resurrection of the German military, ma military machine. Right. 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 Mm. Who are they? What school of thought do they represent? That's missing. Right, too. Right? That's what we're on, yep. And by the way, he taught at St. John's. Uh, Stewart? The author. James, oh. James something Stewart, yeah. Oh. He taught at St. John's. Oh. He says that at the beginning of the book. That right. He had been a lawyer, then he goes out, of, he goes into retirement, teaches at St. John's, but he still has friends in Washington, D.C. who are lawyers, and he goes in for lunches, and then he gets a call from one of them one day and says, hey, how'd you like to come work for the assistant uh, federal attorney general uh, looking into uh, connections between German English and American companies uh, that are uh, uh, actually uh, destructive mm -hmm. to the war effort. Uh, and uh, they thought they'd find a few and they end up finding thousands. Uh, uh, but that's right, you came out of St. John's. Uh, destructive. Uh, well, uh, I mean, an example I gave you, I've only read the first chapter and a half, but... Um, that are pro-German? A, a typical example uh, okay. that, that he brings up. Uh, yeah. Destructive to the war effort. We've got a blockade at that time. Uh, the Brits are leading it, right? Uh, the naval blockade, so Germany can't uh, trade, get anything imported or export, right. so they can't make money, they can't produce stuff. Um, well, they've got an extremely uh, powerful, already by that time, an extremely powerful pharmaceutical industry called uh, Farben Industry. IG Farben. IG Farben. Uh, and uh, what they do is uh, they make an, uh, they, they're selling to South America, but they can't export the, the little pills. Right. Uh, so what they do is they make an agreement with an American company whose name I forget, uh, under exclusive license to produce the exact same uh, damn little pills, sure. pack them in crates that look German, and actually stamp them made in Germany when it's a lie then ship them from North America down to South America, out of the American company into South America. Everybody down there believes that it came out of Germany and buys the same stuff. Now, the American company makes some money out of this, but the Germans make the bulk of it. So they're just laughing the whole way. It doesn't matter if there's any ships in any harbors. They've just made- But it looks like- it lo it They've looks just like they made their affected. money the same <laughs> way. Yeah, so, sure. and these are thousands of deals like this. That's Zenith, great. That's all like the electronics. propaganda. All right, so this is, now you ask yourself, why would an American company- uh, Be anti-American. Be anti-American. They're, they're yeah. it's, it's this, yeah. right? And that there were good thousands of these types of relationships that, no, that got sure. on Earth. And they had access, why Pierre likes this book, is there's a lot of researchers that have done this kind of work, especially in the last 30 years. But this guy was privy to, they had the right to go in and look at the private records of these companies wow. and interview people. And that's why he had a front row seat. He was working for the Attorney General. Mm. Um, he had a front row seat to all the letters that these companies, they didn't have internet, so they're writing back and forth yeah. to each other, making these contracts. And he, great he's looking at this going, holy shit. Wow. So, one of the mysteries of World War II appears to have been why were the German submarines so effective in knocking out American shipping? That's easy. When American companies are going to ship their goods, they know it's a risk and therefore they're going to insurance the ship and all of the cargo. All of the American insurance companies spread their risk. How do they do that? They get foreign companies to buy in on the risk. They spread the risk around. Sure. One of the great sources of refinancing insurance is Switzerland. They have a great financial center, therefore. By the way, all the Germans have to do is to buy into those insurance companies and have a complete list of every ship departure its cargo, the dates in which it will be here and there. They don't need an espionage system. 
they have American business practices. That is the espionage list. That's, that's the weakness. Beautifully stated. This is what. And therefore, they hey, everybody knew it in the in the money market. Totally circumvented. Totally circumvented during the entire war. And that's and fascism. Just, and that is big business yeah. was in, allowed certain practices to go on which were against the war, very clearly. And after the war, there was the great move of denazification of Germany that was subverted by all of the American major firms, including okay. pharmaceutical oil, etc. So and if you want to look at that book, that's yeah. the greatest book that's necessary to get around. Just tell me the name and he has—he happens to have a copy of it. No, what's your name? As a PDF, so we. Oh, really? PDF. Oh please. Uh, so note, note to editor, cut this part out of the tape. Yeah, right. Yeah, I have a PDF of it. Okay. Uh, but you're right. What's the name of it? Oh. We've talked about it before. It's all honorable. Oh, men. that one. This is one of Pierre's most favorite. But you're right, they don't go into the philosophy they do not go into behind the that they all share. Yeah. Like the neocons in the 9-11. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, by the way, speaking of insurance, uh, Barbara Honiger doesn't bring it up, but I believe in a couple of other videos years ago I saw that uh, this guy buys the two World Trade Center yep. buildings two weeks yep. before. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and I've takes out a, a massive insurance. Yep. So yeah. I was kind of just a little curious. Yeah. He knows. He, he fucking, yeah. They all knew what was going to go down. They all know. Hey, they knew it. Hey, wait and a minute. When, I knew it. And you know, and they, there was a wow. massive amount of. By the way, um, sure. the part of the Pentagon that got hit made no sense to hit because it's it's the corner that had just recently been reinforced specifically to withstand any impact from uh, aircraft or anything else, right? Okay. And uh, and Rummy's on the other side of the Pentagon and all those offices. What was in this corner? Yeah, what? Turns out what was in this corner. Well, Rummy, they have, this is why it's such a great documentary. She hits all the high points. Well, we, there's like something like uh, $2 billion that we, or is it $2 trillion? I'm not sure. I can never remember the magnitudes. That's missing just in the last year alone in, in the in the defense budget. They have a quote from Rumsfeld on, right? We don't know where, we don't know where it went, right? Nice. Uh, and then other people are estimating actually it was closer to nine, right? Well, the aud the papers and all the records that had oh. to do with this missing money, You're according to some testimony, were in that corner. Perfect. And the auditors working on the problem who were killed. Nice. That's and better. Conjecture at this point, but where they, but based on some back end testimony. They think that where all this money was going... That was, was going to be the following that Monday. Was, it was going that what? Oh, that was going to be the following Monday after the 9-11. What was going to... What was it? The disclosure of $2 trillion. That trillion. was the amount. Okay. Two to, trillion dollars missing from the, from the military budget. Two trillion dollars. Trillion is Jeez, not small, right? Two thousand billion. Uh, two thousand billions, right? Yeah. And uh, Barbara Honiger says uh, that by all accounts it looks like where that money was going to was direct subsidization of Israel. Of uh, Israel. Yeah. That was that was our budget for them. Yeah. Who are, by the way, the, the major beneficiaries of our policy in the Middle East, which is divide and conquer, topple governments for the next for the next five ten years, which is precisely what they managed to accomplish. Get us into the Middle East using this as an excuse, huh. a new Pearl Harbor. You, you, you guys are here. And uh, those people have a dual rule, uh, dual citizenship, which is against the law. Yeah, Wolfowitz, Pearl, all these guys had dual citizenship with Israel. Yeah. Well, you know, Pierre. Um, to work for the government with dual me member, dual citizenship against the law. Yeah. Since all these terrible things are coming out of European philosophy, I think it's pretty ironic that now Europe is receiving all the refugees from the <laughs> Middle East conflicts. <laughs> yeah. Chickens yeah, coming just, home to roost. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we don't have to deal with it. Yeah. Chickens yeah. come home to live, yeah. We just have to deal Europe, with the Chinese. In my view of Europe, But you've said in the past that the thing about the Great Depression that we suffered in the 30s, late 20, early 30s, was that uh, the good thing that came of it was that it forced people to look at themselves, forced us to get real. And, and some of the best writers we've ever had in this country came out of that time, right? You've told me, 
Well, in, in, in that vein, uh, if we are heading into, we're sliding into the abyss again, uh, World it's possible War. that... Sorry? World War. World War, right? But is it not possible that people will eventually, despite the pain or because of the pain, eventually want to look at ourselves and be more open to an analysis of Heidegger? Be more open to looking at Plato uh, again? All depends upon to what degree the, the data will be available and not disguised. Because everything is, with everything is going to change with the disclosure that 9/11 was what it was, which is a ripoff for the whole country and the stealing of resources and fabricating of, of political philosophy. That, that's, that's, that's enormous the consequences. How many people will have, could and be li lives. could be charged with murder? Well, they're, well they're, yeah, how many? They go over I mean, how many 60, people? Sixty thousand soldiers. They go over this in the, in the documentary that they're they and this was two years ago they were they're already calling for and uh, remember these Nixon is involved in this sir yeah the political he was facing a re-election ah anyway. Nixon thank you Nixon thank you thank you thanks Pierre pleasure thank, thank you. you thank you fun 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 chance good saying hello. Thank you. Babarovsky, oh, David again. Sarah Wolbeck.